Every journey begins with a step. But to take that step, you need courage. Abraham did not know yet, but he stepped out by faith. Say courage. There was no GPS. There was no map. Yet Abraham stepped out. Say here. The first man to ever step his foot on the moon is called Newell Armstrong. This man took courage and put his foot where nobody has ever tread upon in life. Edmund Hillary in 1953 and Tenzin Logan we are the first people to climb to the top of Mount Everest. Without courage, you can't make a move. And without moves, you can't cause waves. And without waves, you never make news. People like the Wright brothers were pioneers in the world of aviation by courage. By what? Courage. In 1904, Scientists met in Edinburgh and said it is impossible to fly a metal into the sky. And their father, who was an engineer, a bishop, was in that council of scientists. And six years after, they disproved it. You don't walk by people's opinion, you walk by courage. Unfortunately, too many people are afraid to be adventurous. They want to relax in the comfort zone of life. Hear the truth. It is risky not to take a risk. All good intentions minus courage will amount to nothing. All good ideas minus courage will never be actualized. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it's time to dream big and pursue your dream. D.L. Moody made a statement and I quote him. He said, God, if God is your partner, make your plan big and pursue it. Hear this truth. Safety first is not the motto of this taker. It may work in a factory. But it doesn't work in the field of faith. Mark 11 to 3. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, <laughs> listen carefully, who shall say unto this what? Mountain. He didn't say whosoever shall say of his problem. We don't say to the problems, we talk about the problems. This is where we miss it. He said, who that shall say to this mountain? He said, who that shall say of the mountain? No. What people do, they don't speak to the mountain. They talk of the mountain. You know, you know my problems? For five years now, things are very tough. You are talking about the mountain. You are not talking to the mountain. God never told you to talk about the mountain. He told you to talk to the mountain. You don't speak about your experience. You speak of your expectations. You don't talk trials talk testimonies. You see, if thou shalt say to this mountain, this is that shall say of the mountain, what people do is to talk of their problems. They don't talk to the problem. Bible faith does not talk of problem. Bible faith talks to the problem. Am I communicating something? What people do is to talk about their problem. God never said talk about your problem. God said talk to your problems. If thou shalt say to this mountain, be thou removed. So all I do is to say, sickness, go. I don't say, you know, I'm sick. I am sick is talking about my problem. Sickness, go is talking to the problem. Do you understand it? Every word of God you read has a spirit behind it. If your wife, for instance, give a text message to you to read, and the husband says, my wife, I love you. She gives it to you. Don't look at it. 
there's nothing special about it just pass it through but if the woman picks that word she will start laughing she will hear the voice of the husband behind that word true I come again a woman and her husband says at test my wife I love you or I say later to her my wife I love you she said come and see see what my husband wrote you that looks at it will just look at this and move your face but the woman will hear her husband's voice behind that I love you have you ever read something and then only you start laughing you were hearing the person's voice true I, have you ever happened to you you are reading something that is there you are able to hear the person's voice behind the word true the person did not he wrote everything that every other person wrote but he, you were he said ah! you heard the person's voice behind the letter every word has God's voice many of us read the Bible but we don't hear his voice do you understand what I'm saying when next time you're reading Bible make sure you are able to hear the voice of God behind the letter the moment you're able to hear his voice your faith becomes very strong that's a faith coming by what the second hearing is in the voice when you hear a voice you will be very very nothing will move you may you hear his voice behind the letter let your amen be strong your last step to success is called it this what? after all said and they pray for you they say go do you know some people would have been millionaires since they say, ah, ah, this pastor does not know what he's talking about that I should go there go where is this, is, this, is this my own background I came from does you know my background background is simply my way allows it back to me on the ground background that means the my way allows what to remain on the ground Otherwise, if you get up, you don't have a background anymore. Back. <laughs> the heroes of the Bible were men of courage. Let me tell you this truth. Never fear what people say about you. When you fear what people will say, you fall in the wrath of conformity. You are you too? you fear what people say, you just begin to conform to what they are saying. Am I talking to you? He said, don't be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change your thinking pattern and tell yourself it can be done. This situation can do what? I have the spirit to move ahead. Otherwise, if you listen to people, you will just conform to their standard. Boy, in every family, there are funny people. When God called me, close people told me you can't succeed. You have a close person around you who is telling you you can't make it. They are in every family. They, are, they may be your friends. They may even be your parents. They may be your sisters. Don't say brothers didn't believe in him. If you are stupid, look at that woman. Look at you. God does not go with you. There is no vision of people. Every that wants to get the vision, he looks for a woman. He has never looked for people to get vision. Moses. Joshua. So if you are waiting for everybody to agree with you, there will be disagreement. Majority carry the vote, not in every case. There are cases where majority does not carry the vote. All of them say we'll be not able. Joshua Caleb said we'll be able. So don't say I'm following public opinion. You can follow public opinion. Wake up. Wake up. Tell your neighbor, wake up. There's something on the inside. Refuse to fit into religious box. To religious what? Box. Men of faith live to adventure. Like Abraham. How do I assess the will of God? Search with your heart. Search what? Search with your heart. That's what you read now. Okay, oh. read? Okay, I will read. Oh boy, who? Oh yeah, who be that? You are reading Bible, oh. Who be that? Tell the soup on fire, eh? 
at at the crayfish i'm coming uh -huh. um, all that ever came before i said put a goose in our order <laughs> <laughs> that is not how how to get something from the world no <laughs> even the chapter you read they ask you need to say i can't remember chapter <laughs> where, did I, where did i even stop them it's like i stopped the chapter five after eh? later i mean the one you just read you couldn't remember i mean not remember in chapter chapter five i didn't remember that it was chapter five you read when you carry the bible you say where did i even stop because your heart was not lead with your Ah, lead with your what? That is how you draw the virtues in the world. That's why even if it's 30 minutes, better spend 30 minutes than saying I'm leading for 20 hours in the world and then nothing is coming. Put your heart into it. You can read, but you may not see. Seeing is understanding. Has anybody ever talked to you and all of a sudden say, I see? Do you, have you ever said so? You are saying, I understand. Understanding comes with concentration. If you want to flow, then concentrate with your heart. Even some when they pray, the same thing. They are praying, oh. They are not there. They are quoting scriptures, oh. He said, took away infirmities and bear my sicknesses. My sins, I'm healed. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. This mosquito. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. It's not how many scriptures you quote. It's not how many scriptures you display. It's your heart in the prayer. Do you know you can be praying without being there? Oh. You can be praying without your heart being there. You can be praying now. In the name of Jesus, everybody pray. Cast out the demons. Cast out the demons. Get out of You look at your phone. Are they come? Oh. Are they come? Come. Call me back in 10 minutes. I'm praying, eh? I'm coming. In the name of Jesus, now cast out, 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 cast out. And they do like this. They are not prayed, though. They are praying. They are clapping. His heart is not. Your heart must be involved. Not the way you're praying, you're sleeping. You've not seen the man of Jesus, too. And then when they say, when they wake up, they say, Nah, the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. <laughs> the beginning and the end, they don't know. <laughs> they just join the prayer halfway. Let me say this. Satan is not your problem. Tell yourself Satan is not my problem. The only problem a Christian has is ignorance. A problem to a Christian is nothing but what? My people are destroyed. The God said my people are destroyed because of the devil. Ignorance is simply what you have ignored to know. Too many Christians are victims of religious cases. You want to propose calamity to other people. It's only the book, they guess here, they guess here, they just do guess more. The point is that it's not objective, it's not A or B. You know it, you know it. If you don't know it, you don't know it. You don't say to want to propose calamity to other people. Jesus found it. He did not jump. Stop looking for what to do. Which are Which are what? Search with all your heart. Sit down with the word of God. Find out what is written concerning. He said, launch into the He 
he said, Lord, nine verse four. Lord, to the deep inside the deep of God's world, the answer is there. You will find your own answer because Satan is always hiding behind your ignorance. He hides behind your what? He used the ignorance to buffet. He's hiding beyond your hands. He said, let Satan take advantage of us. Second Corinthians 2 verse 11. So he takes advantage of people based on their ignorance. He tells a man, <laughs> you do fast, 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 you get money. You get money. You get money. He goes to England. You fast. This one which you are really troubling you. Fast. You get money. Because he knows you don't know that seed time and harvest, not fasting time and harvest. The secret is not the fasting time. We fast to cast out demons. We don't fast to get money. Lack of knowledge is the root of lack of all things. Lack of what? Is the root of lack of. When you are world drunk, you live in the supernatural. Do you know there are people who one book will bring them out? What they do? Night, night, every day. Sorry. In every day, every day, say demons are running them. I said, Look at Settle down with a small book and find out that you are seated in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. When that light turns, you know you are superior to the devil. At that time, you sleep like a baby. But you have not read one book, you have not read to know what you, who you are. You are busy doing bombarding with ignorance. You know what? And so the attack increases because you are doing it without knowledge. So you say, they might pray, these demons don't want to leave me. They won't leave because you are praying in ignorance. Go and sit down for knowledge first before the prayers. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So the message today is big picture for business success. Big picture for business success. If you look at God's word, it says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more onto a perfect day. Proverbs 4 18. So in business and career, God wants you to keep succeeding. From one level of success to another. But hear this. In life, no man can go beyond the picture his mind can see. How far you can see with your mind, that means how far you go in life and business. What you see in your mind, your mind's eye, is what God is permitted to perform for you. God speaking to the man Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 1, 11, 10 to, down 10 to 12. He said, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? Let me take just verse 11 for time's sake. He said, what seest thou? What is your mind able to grasp? And I said, I see the roar of an animal tree. Hear what God replied Jeremiah. He said, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou art well seen, I will hasten my word to perform. It is what your mind is able to grasp that God will perform. Because God said, But without that mind, I do nothing. Philippians, Philemon, not Philippians, Philemon 1. And verse 14. Your mind is the major instrument God uses in increasing you, whether in business, career, etc. 
God wanted to increase Abraham and he said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 13, 14 and 15, he said to him, Abraham, after Lord was separated from him, lift up now the eyes. That eye is not the physical eyes, it's the eye of the mind. He said, lift up your eyes and look from the place where thou art. That is, your business at this point, now lift your eyes up. You have only one chaos, but be able to grab supermarket. You have 1,000, but from your mind, see 1 million. You have 1 million, from where you are, see 100 millions. He said, from where thou art, Look northwards, southwards, eastward, westward, as for all the land. It's not about physical land. And so oh, as far your eyes can see in business, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. So from where your business is now, lift your eyes up. How far can you see your business go through? How far can you go in your career? Your ability to see where your career will carry you to then God will start with you. If you don't see it, you limit God enlarging your ghost. Your business success, no matter the pandemic or Christ the world, is tied to what your mind can see. Let me say this to you. No big dream, no big achievement. Big dream, big achievement. No dream, no achievement. Small dream, small achievement. Where your dream stops, that's where your achievement will also stop. Your size, socks, and achievements in business is a function of the size of your dream. No man can achieve more beyond the dream he says for himself. In business, you can pray all the prayer. You can fast all the fasting. If there's no dream, where your dream stops, that's why your progress stops. The wise man said, you and I can accomplish anything in life except the limits we place on ourselves by our thinking. Who is our dream? Nothing can keep you on the floor except you refuse to rise up. So determination is the major secret for winning in business. Now I'm going to give you three factors for today's teaching that enhances your big dream. That can enhance your big dream. Three what? Factors that can enhance your that enhance your big dream. Number one in business keep the big picture before you. Number one, what? Keep the big picture before you. Your mind can conceive, whatever your mind can conceive, you can achieve. So put the picture. Don't just say, I'm planning to be a great businessman. Make sure there is a picture. That's what? There is a picture before you. And scriptural pictures are the most powerful. The more you focus on the picture you desire, the faster it manifests. We started ministry and from the beginning I had a big picture of becoming a global preacher. So from here I saw the entire globe. I saw what? I did something very profound in business. I put the world globe in front of me in the office. There's no study. There's nowhere. Even in my lounge, people don't know why I kept it. The globe is everywhere I stay, there's a globe. In my study, there's a globe in front of me. At the lounge, there's a globe. Everywhere I stay, for anywhere I can stay for up to 30 minutes, one hour, there must be a globe. I kept looking at the globe, and my dream is whatever I'm doing must hit the entire world. I mean, understand the picture. 
based on Genesis 13, 14 and 15. You know, the man who did it the business, his name is called Jacob. And Jacob did it in Genesis 30, 38 to 43. You remember when he bought, kept the he wanted to beat Laban in business. He kept a picture before him. Are you, how many of you have read it before? Don't just say, I want a big dream without a picture. There has to be a picture. You want your product to sell? You want your product to sell? Then put a picture. Don't just say, I, I, I want to sell my product all over. Put what? Picture. That will inspire you to be seeing it. Is that clear? Number two. Factor that will enhance your big dream. Be determined. Be what? Be determined. Now, look at verse 14. Shall we read 14 to get it to bar for you? I press towards the mark for the prize of the high color of God in Christ's world. I press means determination. Determination is what makes you to overcome setbacks. Disappointments, obstacles, failures that life throws in your path. They will throw them. Life will throw them in your path. But because you are determined, those things can't make you to stop. When failure comes, you still repeat again. When you have setback in business, you get up again. When you have disappointment, you get up again. You will not give up because you are determined to make it. Determination means... For a person to find or make a way, that's all the meaning. Determination simply means you, you must find a way or what? Make, no matter what happens, you find a way or make a way. That's determination. Think, decide, and take action on your ideas. And having plenty of ideas and do nothing about them. Determined people don't just keep ideas, they act on their ideas. Many of us have plenty of ideas, but we do nothing about our ideas. When you are determined, one man who takes one idea and put it is more than one million people who have ideas and do nothing about their ideas. Never give up on your dreams. Never give up on your visions and goals. Abraham Lincoln said, and I quote him, Determine that the thing can and shall be done, and then we shall find the way on both. Eli Keller said, We can do anything we want to do if we stick to it. If we do what? She said, Whatever you want to do, become a wallpaper. Wallpaper stick and does not move. You can't pull it out. Stick to that thing you want to achieve and don't move. Keep pushing. You refuse to be distracted by every challenge that confronts you. Don't settle for less. You can achieve more if you dream more and determine to face your dream. Never give up on your dreams because of challenges. Never give up what? I would have given up if challenges were well, just I refuse to give up. There were challenges. There were what? There were days. There was a day we came to church. Only my wife and I were the adults. But my dream was still inside of me. All of us were children. It was enough for me to give up. To say this vision God has given to me, I should forget it. Yes, you went to market, prepare heavily, and only two people bought your products. Don't give up. You were so determined that you are going to sell to 1,000 people, but only two customers. Don't give up. Don't what? Because your dream is to hit the world. Then all of a sudden, only two. Don't give up. Don't say because two people came, I'm going to stop. That's your dream. Put all. Be determined to make it. Imagine if I gave up one, only two of us were in church. I said, well, God called us, but only today, only two of us attended. Let's stop and go and do another business. We won't have been here. Is that clear? But I'm determined because I have a dream to turn people's life around through the word of God. So determination is making it happen. That was why God can tell me, change it and go this way. Number three, which I close with. 
increase your capacity. Increase your what? Increase your capacity. If that big dream must be a reality, increase your what? One of the greatest roadblocks to your success today is your success of yesterday. Let me say this to you and take this statement. What got you here can't get you there. I repeat. What got you where you are now cannot take you to where you want to be. Did you hear me at all? Your business where you are now, the capacity I've got to where you are cannot take you to where you want to be. To achieve more, you must evolve more. So the size of your result is determined by your personal capacity. Let me say this to you. You cannot use the capacity of managing 100 persons to manage 500 persons. The business will crash. You cannot use the capacity of primary school to write a graduate exam. So when you say you want to grow, you have a responsibility to increase your capacity first before the business will grow to meet you. You understand what I'm saying? I wrote it in a maximum, uh, what is the book, Lasting Impact. It's in Lasting, the book Lasting Impact. You see, I wrote three C's. Capacity is one of the things, it's in that book. Most of you, uh, the book is on your, your shelf. If you read Matthew, and I close, Matthew 25, 14 to 29, we're not going to read. Matthew 25, 14 to 29. Jesus gave a parable. He gave one five talents, gave one two talents, and gave one what? One talent. Have you ever wondered why he gave them? Was it discriminating? Why did he give one five? Instead of giving all of them two, 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 two. Or one, one, one. He looked at each one's capacity. He knew the man that he gave one cannot handle two. He knew the man he gave two cannot handle five. So he looked at their capacity and gave them according to their capacity. And if you watch it, it wasn't with the one that began to complain. Oh, nobody's coming to do business. Listen, your capacity has not been grown. So God says, hey, if I give you the thing you're asking for, you will crash. So first and foremost, you increase your capacity through knowledge and skills. Through what? You improve your current knowledge to go ahead with more knowledge. And then you improve your skill to also go forward. Is that clear, sir? And then God will not see that you have grown. And then the business will grow to match you. And you get what I'm saying? If I tell you something very practical, now you'll be shocked. You can't use the capacity of a capital to produce world-class furniture. If he wants to sell $6,000 a year, he has to improve himself in his skill. He has to prove himself in knowledge on how to produce such kind of... Do you understand it? He will not pray and fast. So we have a responsibility. We have a what? I mean, this is the book. It's inside this book. Last ten. Last place. No devil is warning anybody. Dream big and pay the price. But never give up on your dream. Never give up on what? Just never give up. Never give up. It's not late. You still make it. You see what? With determination. Even the snail got into the ark. To be dreamless is to be doomed. What is your dream? I'm not sure some of you have a dream. No, so that church is not growing. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep doing what will make take it to grow and increase your capacity to grow. Is that clear, sir? That shop is not growing. Increase your capacity. The shop what? Your writing skill. Nobody's buying your books. Increase your capacity. What does it take to write books that will sell it to grow? Everything just increase.
nothing God wants to do that doesn't have a purpose. God is a God of purpose. Why will God give you supernatural increase? He has one of the purposes that He wants to bless you to be a blessing. He wants to use you to expand the kingdom of God to be a channel of blessing. Like ten thousand or twenty thousand, this horn I want to use to demonstrate. Ten thousand notes or twenty thousand notes. Let me explain what I mean. Let me close the, the plan. Let me close with ten thousand. Count like ten. Yes, this is the one. God bless you. It's twenty. God bless you. Now it's okay. Now look at this. This is my harvest, for instance. This is my what? This is somebody's harvest, for instance. Don't worry, I'm okay with it. God bless you. Now this is harvest. This is what? Now this harvest that is with me, either from business, from my salary, anything. This is my harvest. Whatever comes to you is an harvest. Is what? Somebody gave you dash. Anything is harvest. If I have this as my harvest, inside these there are two things. There is a seed and there is a fruit. That's what? This is what I do. If I want another harvest, I will from this, whatever it is, let me just assume that this is 50,000. Can't be counting money. I don't count naira. Sorry to tell you. I don't count naira. I'm not joking. I don't think I've, I've counted naira for the past few years now. Let me not try to say. I don't count naira. It's not a sin, but I don't count it. I don't have that kind of time. I would better read the Bible. Naira I give to my boys to count, no matter the amount. I don't count naira. I'm too busy to count naira. If you keep it in bundle, I can just pick the bundle I want. But to come and say, I did. The time I used to count that one, I used to read John chapter 1. <laughs> now, let's say this is 50,000. I'm just assuming. Now, this 50,000, when it enters my hand, if I want another harvest, I'll have to replant. I have to what? First thing I will do is to remove tight. So, remove what? As soon as it's 50, what's the tithe? 5,000. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is tithe. To the kingdom of God. This is 90% remaining. From this 90, I must give offerings. Must give what? That one is discretional. I use my discretion to know how I want to do it. It's not fixed. This one is fixed. Non-negotiable. Any attempt to touch this can cost you your life. This one is what? If you touch this, it's exactly what Adam did. God will push you out of the garden of Eden. You will go to the garden wilderness of Sophahed. I will not give any percentage I like. I don't want to go into that one. But out of this again, I will plant into a different kingdom. Sunday, the offerings we are giving now, prophet offering, the different, different parts, scatter them. That's when they see that now, once I do like that, God will bring another harvest. Next time, it will increase from 50 to 60, 70, 80, 90, depending on how much I am able to scatter. From that again, I would what? Plant again. It will keep increasing. But if I say no, the money I have is too much. God, no way. Give me this 5,000. As I don't believe in this nonsense, Pastor will chop my money. No. And I decide to eat all this. That is when the cycle will stop. When that money finishes, forget it. There will be no favor from anywhere. Heavens will be closed. Wow. And money you think today is big is nothing. It can be spent in one challenge. Do you understand it? So every time you get a harvest, you plant, you replant for another harvest. Let me explain. I had 50 naira. How much? My wife is my witness. 50 naira, 1997. I planted the 50 naira. It went to 2,000 naira. 2,000 naira, I removed tithe offering, profit offering, it shifted again. 10,000. 100,000. 1 million. With all humility, you know that I'm not in the M level. 
level level you can take. I'm not in B level. I'm reaches that end. So you cannot quantify my wealth. Riches in the sin. Glory. In Christ Jesus. So there's no way. I saw on the internet once a 1.5 billion, once a 15 billion. I said, an insult. How can you equate me 15 billion? That's an insult. What I have, I call it forth every time from heaven. If I want anything, I just say, Father, supply it. He supplies. So how can you quantify that kind of man? You can't size my money. It's an insult to size my money. I just say, Father, I need it. He supplies. He supplies what? My needs. So you can't quantify how much I have because I don't operate with bank account. I operate with heaven's account. If I need one billion, I just say, Father, it's one billion. He will supply the one billion. That's how I operate. So such persons, you can't use our physical cash to assess us. So, all I'm saying is every time you get on harvest, what do you do? Replant. What do you do? A farmer that eats all his harvest will not have another harvest. True? A simple principle. If I go to the farm and get my crops and I say, no, I'm not going to plant again. Can prayer change it? When I finish eating those crops, that's the end. So when God blesses you and you don't sow back to the kingdom, help us to be that's why some of us have breakthrough once we don't have breakthrough again because we didn't plan back it's a cycle it's a what? you get you plant you get you plant you can never be broke for life but once you stop the cycle also stops I don't understand it